Now, specifically, the reason people know the government will confiscate guns, take Katrina. The military comes in, the FBI commands the operation, they block the food aid, they block the police and others from Texas and volunteers that came to help. And then the first mission was go into all the high and dry wealthiest areas, put men in handcuffs, and take their guns like they were criminals with guns in their own house. That was illegal, and they never gave most of those guns back. Even when a federal court said give them back, they said, we want your guns. I mean, they really want our guns. Well, absolutely. Again, you know, every dictator has learned that if you have an armed citizenry, you're not going to be able to accomplish your goal. I mean, this is a simple assault. And, and, and all these dictators over the last 100 years who disarmed people and then murdered them, you know, it's genocide. They've all insisted that people must be disarmed first. And then what do the Obamanoids have in mind for America? Why are Americans an endangered species in their own country? I mean, what, what is afoot? What, what is being planned? Someone better, I think every one of your listeners better start asking some questions and very loudly and demanding answers. If they can't get an answer from somebody, then why is that person allowed to stay in a position of authority? Well, we've gotten answers. I can't believe how the Attorney General, Obama, every one of his major czars we look at, get up on camera and say there is no Second Amendment right, we are going to get your guns. They've introduced the bills. But then they try this psyop of saying, we don't want your guns to make everybody stand down. But it's obviously not working. We're a year and a half into the greatest gun sales the country's ever seen. People are snatching it all up well, that's, and that's saying... Scaring the, that's scaring the daylights out of them, Alex. That's absolutely scaring them. And, and, and they're fearful because they know that they're going to get caught uh, and their crimes are going to become public. And uh, they're really scared. They're really running scared. Well, I would encourage the American people mm -hmm. to, to to educate others about the evils of gun control and also, uh, you know, don't stop buying guns and ammunition. Aaron, in closing, let me ask you this question, because when you come on a few times a year and are gracious to spend your time with us, and I just love your organization and support it, I get emails asking me to ask you a question, and I've actually seen you write about it and speak about it a few other times. Why do we see the Israel lobby... Uh, and so many Jewish members of Congress being some of the most vehement anti-gun people when they know what Stalin and Hitler and others did and they know what happened and they all have their own private bodyguards. Uh, why do we see that uh, from uh, the uh, both Republican and Democrat uh, Jewish leaders so often Republicans being middle of the road or Democrats being vehemently anti-Second Amendment, pro-victim disarmament. Why, why is that going on? Well, I'm not sure I have the total answer, but there's a couple things that I can certainly highlight for you. Uh, Jewish members of Congress who do support gun control are not very Jewish, for starters. People have to understand that. Jewish law demands that Jews are commanded by the Almighty to defend their lives and to defend the lives of those who are under attack. You can't very well defend someone's life, uh, I mean, defend someone's life uh, and, and, and your own life if you don't have the tools to do so. So Jews who pretend to be Jews are the ones who usually are supporting gun control schemes. That's point number one. Number two, I think that many of the uh, alleged Jews in Congress who are supporting gun control schemes really don't understand the Bill of Rights. They don't appreciate America. And they're probably more concerned about being invited to cocktail parties uh, than they are about preserving freedom in America. And it's also a lot of big city urban areas. I've noticed people from cities are generally so scared of guns. I had a British interviewer from Chris Matthews here Sunday, and I have a three fifty seven Magnum. It's actually right over here that I have to protect myself if anybody ever comes into the office. And she started crying and looked scared and panicked in the middle of the interview and I, or near the end. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, is that a gun? And I said, well, yeah, I mean, we don't have police here. If somebody, people kill talk show hosts all the time or threaten them. Well, I you said, know what some... you need to do with that woman is uh, we have an article on our website written by a psychiatrist. It's called Raging Against Self-Defense. 
and she points out the mental health problems that gun prohibitionists have. And so, again, I don't mean to sound so commercial. We have all these things on our site that are free. But people should come read the article, Raging Against Self-Defense. No, no, people session. should visit the site. But expanding on that, literally, she's looking in my eyes, talking to me. I see her look over, and then she, like a little girl who's seen a monster, started going, uh, 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 well, and, and tears came into her eyes, and she went, uh, and was like, is that a gun? And was panicking and shaking. And I said to her, but you feel safe when you see police with guns, don't you? And she you said, know, well, well, part of her problem, Alex, may very well be, as we point out in this essay, Raging Against Self-Defense, is that she may not trust herself to own a gun because she may have so much inner hatred uh, towards people that she doesn't trust you to own a gun. Uh, this is some of the, these are some of the problems that gun prohibitionists try to mask and trying to take our guns from us. But it's so alien to this human common sense. I have an office. A few of my guys have concealed carries. They don't need that in Texas, but they've got them. I invite them. It's just in their fanny packs, and it's never an issue year after year because we're just regular, normal people. But if anybody ever busted in here, they're dead. I mean, we're going to defend yeah, no. ourselves. Well, you're a gun owner. That makes you regular and normal for the most part. Gun prohibitions are not normal. They have some mental health issues. Not well, they really... live in a big city or out in a Thule someplace. I mean, mental health issues are mental health issues, and a lot of gun uh, prohibitionists have, do have these mental health issues. Well, they really do. I mean, it is irrational and crazy, and I've seen it repeatedly when people will see a, I had a carpet cleaner at my house, and I had a shotgun up in a case on the wall, and he saw it and panicked and said he couldn't clean my house and ran off and called the police on me, but the police didn't. I mean, these people are crazy. Well, they are. I mean, they have some issues that uh, we're not going to solve real quickly. They need some serious psychological counseling. And uh, you just have to realize that. that's why they're so dangerous. And I would have bet the Obama administration is made up of people who have very serious mental health issues. Well, that's true. But why do they then love SWAT teams with guns? Like somebody who loves freedom is threatened well, because, by that. Because they, they may have mental health issues, but they lust for power. And the police are their power arm. That they use, they can use the police to reach out and to destroy those they fear. Very well said, Aaron Zellman. We love your organization and the great work you do with Gunners of America, jpfo.org. We'll talk to you again in the near future, and your website is a treasure trove of facts to deprogram people. The good news is most liberals I know are no longer liberals. They're patriots, and they're all buying guns and training and loving it and have broken their fear, and once they go out and shoot, they laugh at their previous fear. You're saying that too, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, they learn the fun of a gun, and they learn that uh, self-defense is a very good idea and that being a coward is not a good idea. It is so satisfying that I've got firearms. I'm not afraid. I, I can't imagine not being armed and that, and, that, and that being castrated and weak. I mean, I'm here. I'm armed. I'm red-blooded like my ancestors, and I'm not a slave. Aaron Zellman, we appreciate you, fellow patriot. Look forward to talking to you again in the near future. Be well, Alex. Take care. We'll be right back. I'm going to play a clip from New Orleans with them confiscating guns using the Army. Then I'm getting into the election in Massachusetts.